Zeta with Sidewalker Daily and in today's video I want to talk about Instagram influencers and what brands want and kind of like what they expect when working with influencers. Now I get to do lots of coaching with different influencers and content creators and the topic of working with brands always comes up. I think time and again, people want to know what do brands want? What do they expect from me in this partnership? Um, and luckily, I'm here to share that because I've worked on tons of influencer campaigns on the brand side in the past. Um, so I can kind of get, you know, give you an insight as to what brands are looking for and what, you know, kind of we expect, kind of what we want. And I think if you guys have this knowledge, um, it'll just make you a better partner for any future influencer influencer um, campaign that you'll be doing. So the first and most important thing for you as a content creator or influencer to understand is the brand's goals and their objectives. Now, let me give you an example. If a, you know, if you're in negotiations with the brand and they want you to post X amount of times or create certain amount of content, but you don't really know what their reason is, then how can you as a service provider, as someone who's giving them a certain service, really excel? How can you get rebooked for a different campaign if you don't necessarily know what their goals are? So I often tell people that I coach on the, you know, on our coaching calls, I say, ask them directly, ask these brands, what are your goals with this campaign? And that way, you know, you can help provide the best steps to reach those goals because you guys know um, your audience and you know what works and what doesn't work. And with that said, you know, feel free to get a little marketing on them and ask them what are their KPIs, their key performance indicators. This basically is asking them, how will I be measured? What looks like success to you? And you know, on the brand side, we'll say, for example, okay, we're going to do a campaign and we expect this amount of followers or account to our account to grow by this number. Let's just say if you knew that number ahead of time, then you could craft different um, promotions to help them get there. So for example, like you may be like, you know what, rather than doing a permanent post or less, like I'll do more stories or maybe we could do a giveaway because that's worked really well for you. You know, I don't really know what's worked obviously for you guys or not, but the point is, is asking a brand to be very clear with their KPIs, their key performance indicators is letting you know how you will be measured. And it's super important because we do not want to go into a one night stand approach when working with brands. I tell this time and time again to anyone that I coach on the phone, I drill it in. I'm like, no one night stands. We need to make these one-off partnerships or these one-off sponsored posts into long-term um, retainer-based clients for you guys. You know, why just do a one-off sponsored post when you could slowly convert them into something that's a little bit more long-term for you and that will be a more stable source of income. So that's kind of the mindset I try to teach, you know, um, my students when I'm working with them and hopefully you guys can start to get into that, main, you know, that mindset as well. So another thing I think brands want to know, or I guess part of our expectations when working with Instagram influencers is to give us a little bit of direction as to what works well with your, you know, on your platform. If you're able to shed that insight in a way that will help the brand, you know, reach those goals, that's golden. So let me give you an example. I was recently um, coaching this young girl and she has a really great influence online. Um, and the brand that came to her wanted to do a giveaway. And she, you know, sent me an email. She's like, Nina, I hate giveaways. They do really bad on my platform. Like my audience just doesn't like them. Um, and I was like, okay, well, you know this. So if the brand wants a giveaway, you would be doing a disservice to them by giving them something that they want without, you know, you know it's not gonna do well and you know it's not gonna help you shine and you know it's not gonna get them what they want. So we crafted like an email, you know, to basically explain to the brand, hey, we don't wanna do this, but we'll do this instead. And those results, you know, to help them get the same results, which they were looking for, and they were stoked on the idea. The girl from the PR side loved it, they ate it up, and we were able to do something that was a win-win partnership for both the creator and the brand. And I think that's really what it comes down to. So, you know, you guys know your audience. Your audience is, you know, what gives you business. 
You guys know what makes them tick and what does it. So on the brands, we don't know that. We don't know like, hey, this doesn't work well or that this works amazing and your brand, you know, your audience loves when you do this. So we would hope slash expect for you to share that information, obviously in like a respectful and communicative way. So it's not like, well, no, I don't want to do a giveaway, but I'll do this instead. No, it's, hey, you know what? I don't think a giveaway this is just the giveaway example, but it's like, you know, I just don't think the giveaway will help you reach your goals in the past when we've done them. Um, but I, I find that when I do blah, 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 this works better. Um, and, you know, those are things that we figure out on the coaching calls and we like iron it out. But being able to tell brands what you, you know, what you want to do or in addition to how you can help them is always a win. I think another thing on the brand side that, you know, brands expect is for you to be upfront with anything you're not comfortable, comfortable with ahead of time. So let's just say you're going on a press trip or you're doing, you know, a can let's just say a press trip. Okay. For that example. And, you know, you don't want to go to the animal sanctuary because you feel a certain way about seeing animals in captivity. Okay. Let's say that's like, how you feel and that's on the itinerary rather than waiting you know till a minute or five minutes before that event is supposed to take place if you can you know communicate that to the brand ahead of time i'm sure you know nine times out of ten or even ten out of ten they want to they want this experience to be you know good for you and they want you to be able to enjoy it so like speak up and that was just a press trip example but it could be like a sponsored post example as well if you know they're giving you a cookie cutter like caption and you just don't really want to just say what they want you to say again because you know it's not going to work we want you guys to be able to feel comfortable to you know come to us with solutions not just like no i don't want to but with solutions as to you know how to make it better now my next I guess tip is a big one because this is once the campaign goes live, you know, we expect the Instagram influencers we work with to be available, um, obviously to post on time, to set timers if you need to, to not have people on the brand side have to like babysit or check in, you know, it makes our lives so much easier when the work is just obviously done on time, but testing things like, you know, if it's a video clip and you need to download it to your phone, doing that ahead of time, you know, not 10 seconds before the post needs to go live um, and taking, you know, responsibility in whatever it is that, you know, needs to go up. You know, you're able to make sure that the links work if it's a swipe up, you know, that there's no typos, you know, we kind of expect if we're paying you to work with us on a campaign, that those things will be um, taken into consideration. So hopefully this tip will help, you know, help you when you're doing those campaigns, like, oh, I need to be on. And if, for example, you know you're traveling that day, or if you get some news that, you know, you're traveling or you have a conflict and your post is supposed to go live, you know, at a certain time, either you say no to another event because you know you need to be on when that goes up or you have an assistant you know available for you to post or whatever it is but that you guys take the necessary steps to ensure that things run smoothly when it's available to post because chances are you never know what could go wrong in the logistical side of posting but also on the back side like what if there's backlash to the post you know we've seen cases where we've done a campaign and then the comments are super negative and we need to get like really creative in the moment so the brand rep may be texting you and being like okay we need to respond to comments in this way or can we remove the post or whatever it is you know being available at that time can help you you know I guess, like prevent any of those things from happening because you're on it and you're able to um, problem solve ASAP. Another thing brands expect and they want are measurable results, right? So like a lot of times if it's not done through Instagram creator or business manager and we can't see your analytics, we expect you guys to really just make sure you're doing your print screens make before, you know, things expire. If you have things that maybe we can't see, like on the back end of your website, any analytics of anything, you know, on the analytical side, we totally expect and would want you to, you know, make sure that you're able to deliver that to us because that's 
that's probably the most important part of any campaign and people on the brand side want to have those results to show you know their higher ups why this campaign was successful and why working with you was successful so definitely 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 take the time to make sure all the back end all the analytics is taken care of and even things like comments like if there's really amazing comments and this is what we call like sentiment you know print screen those and send them over as well it doesn't hurt it's also just going to make you a more i guess like professional influencer and someone that people will want to work with again. And the last two points I'm just going to um, finish up here is to ensure that you disclose properly. It's, you know, I've seen this time and time and again when people on the brand side don't, um, they'll tell the influencer like, you know, we expect you to disclose the post and the influencer doesn't. And then it's just kind of awkward because we have to go back and ask you again or we don't. And you always want to stay on the right side of the law. So make sure you're disclosing everything properly. And lastly, to be professional, you know, timely to emails, making sure, you know, we expect that like if we send you an email, we're not going to get a response like six days later, you know, that we're able to count on you to be the professional that you are. Okay, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this brand perspective um, sort of video. As I said, we've worked with tons of brands on their influencer campaigns, and now we coach influencers and content creators. So I will leave all the links below if you know you need a little bit of one-on-one -on -one, um, to understand how your person, you know, how you could work better with brands. And if you guys like this video, give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.